Welcome to the walkthrough for assignment 1A in my CS253 course that focuses on parallel functional programming with Java, Android, and Spring WebFlux. The purpose of the first part of this two-part assignment is to deepen your experience using Java functional programming features and their integration with Java sequential streams. In particular, in this assignment, you'll develop an app that uses Java sequential streams to obtain, transform, and store images. The code that you write for this assignment has a GUI and runs as an Android app. Please feel free to use this app to help debug your solution. The following resources may be helpful in completing this assignment. There are good overviews of Java streams that appear at these two links, and the book Modern Java in Action is a great resource to learn how to program Java streams. Naturally, we'll cover this material in my class. And you can find this in my YouTube CS253 playlist or through other resources available through Brightspace. The Image Crawler app is packaged as a project using Android Studio. This app is written in both Kotlin and Java and demonstrates many Android capabilities. For the purposes of Assignment 1A, however, you only need to be aware of the following directories. Image Crawler Crawlers which contains the skeletons you need to fill in, as we'll talk about shortly. Image crawler source test, which is a set of unit tests that exercise the features you're implementing to evaluate whether you've correctly satisfied this assignment's requirements. And app source Android test Java assignment tests, which is an Android Studio instrumentation test that runs your app automatically. To compile this code, you'll need to use the provided Android Studio project. You can run this project by clicking the green Run App button in the Android Studio IDE, which should automatically select an Android emulator to run, assuming you have one created. The app's minimum API is 31, so you'll need to select an emulator that uses API greater than or equal to 31. I recommend using API 32. If you don't already have an Android emulator, you can create one by clicking on the AVD Manager button in the Android Studio IDE. You'll need to modify several files containing the skeleton Java code by completing the to do you fill in here task to provide a working solution. Do not change the overall structure of the skeleton. Just fill in the to do tasks and please don't delete the to do tags. In particular, you need to finish implementing the following to do tasks for this assignment in the image crawler crawlers folder. First, you'll need to complete the skeleton for sequential streams crawler.java by completing the to do tasks in various methods to obtain, transform, and store images. This class uses Java sequential streams to perform an image crawl starting from a root URI. Depending on the parameters used to run the test, images from the HTML pages reachable from the root URI are either downloaded from a remote web server or read from the local file system, and the results are stored in the local file system on the Android device. You'll also need to complete the toDo tag in student.kt to set the type field to include just graduate or undergraduate depending on which version of the assignment that you're implementing. The bulk of the code for the app is provided in the skeletons. In fact, a complete solution using Java 7 features is provided in the sequential loops crawler.java file. You'll therefore focus on converting this Java 7 based class to the sequential streams crawler class that uses Java sequential streams. Your solution should use no loops or if else statements in this assignment, and instead use Java sequential stream aggregate operations and functional programming features. Your solution will be considered correct if it passes all the unit instrumentation tests, is commented thoroughly, and addresses my review comments. Skeleton code for this assignment is available here in my GitHub repository. Please set up your GitLab account, pull the skeleton code into your repository, read it carefully, and complete the to-do markers. The unit tests in the image crawler source test folder are provided to increase our collective confidence your implementation is working as expected. You need to use the Android Studio GUI to run the unit tests locally on your computer, as described here. As usual, testing only demonstrates the presence of bugs, not their absence. So don't rely solely on the unit test to detect problems in your code. Assignment 1A is designed to deepen your experience developing apps using Java sequential streams and functional programming features. The skeletons and unit tests are quite extensive though you don't need to understand them all to complete your solution. Please therefore start early and ask questions in class, office hours, and on the discussion forum to ensure you complete this assignment successfully. Now that we've walked through the specification for assignment 1A, let's take a look at the implementation focusing on the skeletons. 
that you have to fill in to implement the solution. If you take a look at the image crawler, source, main, Java, edu, Vanderbilt, image crawler, crawlers folder, you'll see there's a couple of files. Sequential loops crawler, which is a complete Java 7 implementation of sequential solutions for web crawling, and sequential streams crawler, which is the skeleton code that you'll need to fill in to complete your assignment 1A. Here's the implementation for sequential loops crawler. I'm not going to walk through this in detail. However, basically what it does is it uses classic Java 7 features like if statements and loops and so on in order to be able to perform the web crawl. And you can see there's a bunch of code here. You can read this code to see how all the different parts work and how you can solve this problem using a classic object-oriented Java-based implementation. Our focus, however, here is going to be on the sequential streams crawler, which uses, surprise, surprise, Java sequential streams features to perform an image crawl starting from a root URI that's passed as a parameter. Images from HTML pages reachable from the root URI are downloaded from a remote web server or the local file system, and the results are stored in files that are displayed to the user. All the stream operations that we'll be implementing here are performed sequentially in a single thread of control. So let's go ahead and take a look at the various methods that you have to fill in. We'll start with perform crawl, which is the main entry point into this code. This method recursively crawls the given page URI that's passed as a parameter, and it returns the total number of processed images, which you can see comes back as an int. What you'll need to do here is you'll need to carry out the following steps. You'll need to use a Java sequential stream to first use a factory method that creates a one element stream containing just the page URI. And then you use an intermediate operation to filter out that page URI if it exceeds the max depth or if it's already been visited. And you can go over here to this implementation that's the Java 7 version and get some good hints about how to do those particular computations. However, you won't be using if statements, you'll be using this intermediate operation in Java streams. You'll then use another intermediate operation to call the crawl page method and return the total number of processed images. And then the final thing you'll do is you'll use a terminal operation to get the total number of processed images from the one element stream. So you'll have to fill in that code and you should basically chain it together using the fluent interface pattern that we'll talk about in class. From this method, there's a method from the perform crawl method, there's a call to the crawl page method. And this method here uses Java streams features to download and process images on this page via process image, which we'll take a look at in a second. Recursively crawl other hyperlinks accessible from this page via perform crawl and return a sum of all the image counts. And here's what you'll do here. You'll again use a factor method to create a one element stream containing just the page URI. Then you'll get the HTML page associated with the page URI parameter. You'll filter out any missing, in other words, null HTML page entries. Then you'll call process page to process images encountered during the crawl. And finally, as before, you'll use a terminal operation to get the total number of processed images from the one element stream. So you'll have to fill in that code. Again, please use fluent interface style programming to chain all the parts together. As you can see here, this crawl page method calls process page and process page uses a Java sequential stream to download and process images on this page via process image, recursively crawl other hyperlinks accessible from this page via perform crawl, and it'll return the sum of all the images processed during the call. So you can see this takes a page and a depth, and it performs the following steps. You'll get a sequential stream that contains all the image and page elements on this page. And for hints about how to do that, you want to come down here and take a look at process page. And you can see that there's a call here to this helper method called get page elements, passing in image and page. But instead of a loop, which is what we use here, you're going to be using a stream. And then you're going to map each web element in the count of images produced by either processing an image or by crawling a page. If you look back over here, you can see how we did this in the Java 7 looped version by making separate calls to either process image or perform crawl, which by the way is a recursive call. In this implementation over here, in the functional version, there's a couple of different ways to do it. You'll want to be using either map or map to int 
using some very clever techniques. We'll talk about those very clever techniques that you're able to use if you so choose. There's a very straightforward way using map and taking into account the type of the element, be it image or page. And I'll let you figure that out. And then the final thing you'll do here is you'll sum all the results together. And that, of course, will use the sum operator. That's a terminal operation that comes with streams. Let's go take a look at process image. That's one of the methods that'll be called here from process page. So if you have an image, then this is going to process the image by applying transformations that have not already been applied and cached. And you'll take an image URL and return a count of the number of successfully transformed images. So this particular method is going to create and use a Java sequential stream. And this sequential stream will use a factor method to create a one element stream containing just the page URI, which is what this thing is passed in here, this URL. You'll then get or download the image from the given URL. You'll filter out any missing page entries by looking to see if they're null and ignoring those. You'll then transform the image and return a count of the number of transforms applied. And then finally, you'll sum the number of images that were processed. Now to transform the image, surprise, surprise, you're going to call this method down here called transform image. And there's a couple of different variants here. There's something called transform image and transform image uh, remotely and transform image locally. For this particular implementation, we're just going to be worrying about transform image locally. So you don't have to worry about doing a transform image remotely. That shouldn't be part of this particular program. So you're, you're just going to be doing transform image locally. So you don't actually have to write transform image. It's provided for you. But you do have to fill in transform image locally. And this will take an image and return an int. So what you'll do is you'll create and use a Java sequential stream as follows. You'll convert the list of transforms. And you can find the list of transforms by taking a look over here. When you take a look, you can see there's this M transforms field. And so you'll convert that into a sequential stream. Then you'll attempt to create a new cache item for each image, filtering out any image that already has been locally cached. You'll apply each transform to the original image to produce a transformed image. You'll filter out any null images that weren't transformed. And finally, you'll return a count of the number of non-null images that were transformed. And again, if you take a look here, you can kind of get a hint for some of the classes to, to use or some of the methods to use here, like create new cache item and apply transform and so on. But you'll have to do this in a streams-like manner. Now, as I mentioned before, for this particular assignment, you can just ignore transform image remotely. We're not going to be doing that now. That'll be something that'll come along in basically the second part of this assignment. We'll talk more about that when we get to that point. So those are the skeletons that you have to fill in to implement this particular solution. Uh, again, a good way to figure out how to do this stuff is to take a look at the Java 7 version and then just kind of follow along and make sure that you are doing that logic except doing it using Java sequential streams. Now that we walk to the specification and the skeletons, let's go ahead and take a look at how to run the unit tests. In this case, you go to image crawler, source, test, and then you'll go ahead and do whatever you need to do in your IDE to right click on test. On my Mac, I do it probably a slightly different way than I would do it on my Windows machine. In any event, you go ahead and run the tests. The tests take a little bit to instantiate because they have to go out and compile the project. And then at that point, the tests will be ready to be run. As you can see here, the tests are up and running. If all goes well, then you'll get little green check marks besides each of the tests that are run. If something goes awry, on the other hand, you'll get either a yellow or a red marker. And then you can click on it and find out what, uh, get some information about what may have gone wrong. Sometimes the results are not always as intuitive as you might like. But in that case, please feel free to come to office hours and ask questions. So in this particular case, you can see that all the tests that were run passed successfully, which is a good sign. It should be a good sign because this is my solution. And when you run your code, you should endeavor to make sure that you get only green check marks when you run the unit tests. And please make sure to run the unit tests. Very, very important. Your grade is largely dependent on how well those tests run. So now that we've taken a look at the specification, the skeletons, and I've shown you how to run the unit tests, 
Let's go ahead and run the instrumentation test to put the app through its paces. The way you do this is you come up to Android Studio, you select App, and you click the little green button after, of course, installing your emulator. And that will go ahead and launch the app to run in the emulator. You can see that down here at the bottom it says Gradle Build Running. So that means it's basically uh, loading everything and getting it ready to run. The app is now open and ready for business in the emulator. If you come up here and click on the little ladybug icon, you'll see you can select between different implementation strategies. We could do sequential loops, which is the one that uses the Java 7 code, or in this case, we want to select sequential streams, which is the implementation you'll be doing for assignment 1A. So there's also some other things you can play around with here. You can enable or disable different transforms. You can change the crawl speed, but let's go ahead and just use the defaults. So we come over here and we click on the download floating action button. That will go ahead and start downloading all the images sequentially. Now in this particular case, we're downloading in quotes from the local file system. We could also download from my website. This is just a little bit faster for testing purposes. And you can see here that everything worked according to plan. We downloaded 96 images in one thread and it took about 10 seconds using the sequential streams implementation. So that's basically showing how we can go ahead and, and run that particular uh, variant of the code. So this is just another way to get a sense of how things work. If you have bugs in your code, then not surprisingly, you won't be able to download anything or you'll get strange downloads. So it's a good idea to go ahead and test out the instrumentation tests as well as the unit tests or the regression tests we did earlier so you can give yourself confidence that the system is working as planned.